Hello, Mom over here and welcome to the last module in Earth Science. I am a bit melancholic but as all things must come to an end, so does our Earth Science course. So, in our last module, we are discussing the geological methods of dating. Our learning objectives describe how layers of rocks, stratified rocks, are formed, describe the different methods relative and absolute dating of determining the age of stratified rocks, explain how relative and absolute dating were used to determine the subdivisions of geologic time, and describe how index fossils, also known as guide fossils, are used to define and identify subdivisions of the geologic time scale. Okay, so our discussion can be divided into two parts. We have the relative and absolute dating. So both methods is used in order to date the materials and fossils that we locate. So uh, when did this fossil start its preservation or when did this form or when did the rock layer, uh, different rock layers have been formed. So both relative and absolute dating are important. So these are just basic concepts in our geological dating, but it will give you a rough idea um, in understanding how our geologists, our paleontologists, scientists, come up with these values of time so for example if a scientist presents a fossil which is from 500 million years ago you would have some rough idea how did the scientists come to that conclusion okay so first method of geological dating that we should discuss is relative dating now this is not related to being romantically involved with your cousin or something like that. This is putting a date into the formation, like looking for the time period where a certain material, when the certain material has been formed in relative to other things or in reference to other things in the environment. So, for example, um, relative to the other rock layers present, to the same rock layer, the fossils present, and the other fossils present in the other rock layer. So, um, in this scenario, we will put an estimate on the formation of certain materials in reference to the materials surrounding it. So, that's relative dating. Okay, so to understand how relative dating works, there are certain principles that you have to understand. First, you have your law of superposition. So when we say law of superposition, um, it's always the lower layer, which is the oldest. Okay, states that, un that in an undisturbed sequence of rocks, the oldest strata layer will be found at the bottom of the basin. So the law of superposition can be very visible or easily visible if the landscape has not been altered at all. So either by normal earth processes, plate tectonics, earthquakes, or human activity, then you can easily use the law of, su law of superposition to relatively date your rocks and fossils so for example in this blurry picture here we can um use the law of superposition okay so we have one two three four layers so the one at the bottom will always be the oldest layer while the ones on top here in layer number four will be the youngest since it's the one on top okay so for example in this landscape Okay, so you will see that there has been a gradual change of materials um, here through the layers. But aside from that, due to the love superposition, you can assume that this layer right here at the bottom is oldest. So this part is the oldest among this rock strata. And the one on top here will be the youngest. So you will see that as you go downwards, so starting from the top downwards, the material will keep getting older and older and older. Same goes with the fossils that you may find. So for example, you found a fossil here and you want to compare it to the fossil you find here. Of course, this one at the bottom will be older than the one on top. 
Okay, so that's your law of superposition. So the law of superposition is possible because of the principle of original horizontality. So this principle states the sediments which have which are produced due to the normal, normal weathering and erosion process will assume a horizontal manner due to gravity, then will assume such orientation until lithification process preserves it. So if you can recall, we have discussed that all rock layers are, will undergo weathering. Okay, and the sediments which results to that weathering process may stay in one place or will be transported to another to finally create a new rock or a new rock layer. So regardless if it's transported or not, it will create a new rock layer and the orientation of that rock layer will be horizontal. So always in our perspective, the new rock layer will be horizontal because of the pull of gravity. Okay. So, but that's not always the case, however. So this is the principle of original horizontality. If the if the environment is ideal, it will always follow this orientation. And so thus the law of superposition, that will always be the orientation of our rock layers. But that's just not always the case. So there are certain scenarios where younger rocks may cut through and like disturb your conformity. So this, by the way, is called conformity. Like it conforms to the principle of original horizontality and the law of superposition. Okay, so when we say principle of cross-cutting relationships, this occurs when there are cracks in the rock itself. So when there are faults or fractures in the rocks, there is a possibility that younger materials may cut through and fill those gaps. So for example, here, blue. Okay, so for example, here, there was, before this was filled out, okay, so this part uh, easily follows the law of superposition. So you have older rocks, younger on top, and all the materials are horizontal. But due to some earth processes, there is a material here that um, went into the gap. So let's say there's a crack here. So there's a material that invaded or permeated the older material. So when that, if that's the case, then you can always assume that this part is always younger. So this material is always younger than the other parts of our material right here. Because you can imagine you have this layer, but this won't form if there was no crack or fracture in our rocks okay so this material will be youngest so this is usually the case when you have volcanic eruptions so sometimes you have your normal rock layer here so it's doing its own thing <laughs> following the law of superposition it's conforming to the law of superposition but it forms some cracks or it has spaces in between so if that's the case then new material may invade the rock layer and it will be always therefore younger because it's not it won't be present unless there's fracturing or crack in the older layer that we have so that's just applying the law of superposition and then the eventual damage that may happen to our uh, layers Okay, so sometimes, yeah, as I have mentioned, this happens when it comes to volcanic eruptions. So sometimes, or volcanic magma, or magma in, underneath the earth, sometimes since these are fluid, or, um, yeah, this, these are fluid, they could, like, move through the gaps within the rocks itself and fill those gaps. That's why you have these formations right here. Okay, so that's principle of cross-cutting, so crossing through the layer or cutting through the layer. So principle of cross-cutting relationship. 
Okay. Then another scenario which does not follow our conformity is inclusion. So pieces of rocks contained within another in the same way. Um, anything mineral etc. that is enclosed embedded in rocks are older than the rocks units surrounding it. So for example, like imagine a rock. Okay, so imagine a rock. Then after some me mechanical weathering, it will be disintegrated into small pieces. But before it can be fully like like pulverized into dust-like particles or soil-like particles, it started to form into a new rock. So it's like having small pieces of rock form a bigger rock. Now, if you will compare... Okay, if you will compare the materials within your new rock, it's sort of a mosaic, a combination of different rocks within a new rock. So those are inclusions. So pieces of older rock will be contained in a newer rock. So this is, in this picture, you will see that um, the ones with the red mark, those are older. So those are older than the darker material which is surrounding it. Same goes here. You have older, older, darker igneous rocks which surrounds this lighter, which is surrounded by lighter rocks here. Okay. So another example here. So you have a darker intrusion here. It's just older. And then um, before it can be fully pulverized into sediments, it started to be a part of a new rock here. So a new rock layer here. So the surrounding material is younger than the intrusion here. Okay, so let's stop there and we'll continue in the next video.